Welcome to Believe in 76ers with your hosts, former 76ers point guard Eric Snow and two Sixers fanatics in Marcus and Tasia Dash. Believe in 76ers is presented by BetOnline.ag. BetOnline remains your number one source for all your college basketball betting this season. Get analysis of every play, prop, and point at BetOnline. You'll find the latest odds, bracket contests, team matchups, and game trends at BetOnline. Updated odds for everything from live games, the conference championships, right through the Final Four and championship game. BetOnline is your college basketball headquarters this season. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to sign up and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Be sure to use our promo code BELIEVE, that's B-L-E-A-V, to receive your bonus. BetOnline.ag, where the game starts. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Believe in 76ers podcast for our 76th episode. I'm Marcus Dash here with legendary 76ers point guard Eric Snow and my brother, Tasia Dash. Guys, 2-0, feeling pretty good about things right now. Feeling pretty good about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Happy. I mean, we, we are where we thought we should be, so you know, hopefully we can keep it up. That's true. Yeah, that's true. That, that game, uh, I know we're going to deep dive into it, but I, I, I thought the games were kind of going to be like flip-flopped. I thought game one was going to be like that, and I thought game two was going to be more like what we saw at a game one. So that, that was that was interesting. But yeah. Get more into that later. Yeah, we have a total episode to, uh, dedicated to the last two games. Uh, but before we get into that, the, kind of the hot topic is um, – the, the series that everyone's talking about right now is the Golden State Sacramento series. Um, last night, uh, obviously, uh, Draymond Green got ejected from the game. Everyone's talking about um, if he should get suspended. Uh, do you think that the league will suspend him based on him stepping on Sabonis' uh, stomach after Sabonis grabbed his ankle? What do you guys think about that, Eric? What do you what do you think about that whole play? Everything that went down. I mean, they they looked at it and they deemed it a flagrant two. So. Um, the penalty has been established. Um, I don't know how much they can determine past that. You know what I'm saying? Suspension wise, I don't. I don't, I don't know how much they can determine that. Um, the flagrant two. You know, some people think that was questionable. Um, it was in some way. It, it was intentional. Like how how, how bad it, it hurt him. I don't know, but it. I think he meant to get off of me and here, this is what I'm going to do because you're holding on to my leg. Um, yeah. You know, some people pull, some people pull away when you're hurting their leg. <laughs> some people go forward when you're holding, the, holding on to their leg. Um, but it, it's almost like when you, you think back to, you know, elementary school and, and, and someone pushes someone and the second person always gets caught. It's almost like he did this, so I did that. Um, being that it was a foul for Urs on Sabonis, and then it was an act based on the foul, for that reason, I don't think he gets suspended. If it was just all Draymond and Draymond only, um, and it was something that he didn't get caught during the game, then maybe you know it could you could you could look at that. But the fact that he was ejected in the crucial part of the fourth quarter. I, I don't see them su- su- suspending him. In addition to that, I, I don't. I don't think that happens. Maybe a fine, but I don't see a suspension. Do you think he should have been thrown out? It was a flagrant two. Yeah. Yeah, I, I thought it was. I thought. I thought the intent was there for it, based on the rules, for it being a flagrant two. Um, I thought. So Bonus action was a flagrant one. That's why I thought Raymond's was a flagrant two. Yeah, I didn't think his was a common foul. I thought that should have been a flagrant one. Yeah. It's dangerous. It was intentional. It, 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 it was intentional. It, it, it was intentional and it was unnecessary. Yep. That, yeah. That's flagrant one. Um I thought Draymond's was intentional and unnecessary too. They just yeah. established it to be a, a flagrant two. It just looked I thought a that. Weird. Well, I mean, it was, it was intentional. I mean, you know, come on, let's. Um, 
I mean, I think he even said I was getting him off of my leg ankle. That, that's intentional. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> um, he chose. He chose. It was either fall or kick him loose, and he chose kick him loose. <laughs> yeah, but most people like if if you're grabbing someone's leg, most of the time you pull away to get a, to get from someone. Um, if I'm if I'm if I'm going to jump on top of you, there's some intent in that. Yeah. Um, but like I said, I, it was, if that was a flagrant two, Sabonis was a flagrant one. I, I think in that's the case, you just it's move on to the next game. Yeah. It was a very opportunistic move for Draymond. It was like it, – because it all happened so fast, right? So he grabbed it. And it was like I can probably get away with a nice little quick like kick right now, but because he's he's holding me, so what am I supposed to do, right? But it's like we replay things a million times. We slow it down. We have a bunch of different angles. It's like people are gonna see that, like you said, it was unnecessary. Like they're gonna see that. They just are. Like you can you you can have an argument for why you did what you did, Draymond. Like it's totally understandable. I sure, yeah. but at in the end of the day, we we did you have to smash your foot into into his sternum but that, that that's the question yeah i mean it, it was the the foot moved forward because obviously when he grabbed him he was still on the ground mm -hmm. and then he lifted it up and went forward and clearly stepped on him yeah i mean that, that that's that wasn't you know so i don't think it's a way to shake it i i think yeah it was, it was it a was get off me too to me, yeah, to me, to me, them calling it a flagrant two, in my opinion, ends it. Um, I think, like I said, I think what they missed was the flagrant one on yeah. some moments. Yeah. Which they can still they can still call that, right? I believe they can upgrade it. Um, but it you go to say you don't get a chance for that extra point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Which at the time I believe the score was closer than it was the way it ended. Mm -hmm. uh, um. Yeah, I mean, but he missed both free throws. He missed the boat, mm. if I remember right. Yeah, yeah. So it, you know, they got him the ball back, but other than that, like it didn't, the free throws didn't matter. But yeah, the yeah. big thing was Draymond was no longer in the game. And if you don't think that if I'm winning or losing, you're kidding yourself. Mm. Absolutely. That's what I, I I told Marcus but during both games, especially last game, because it got a little chippier in, in our game, I mean, the six or the next game. I was like, it's going to always don't engage with the Nets because when you look at Royce O'Neal and MB getting into it, who has more to lose there? No. Right, the, the Nets and O'Neal or the Sixers and MB? So they might even get – a little worse throughout the series just to try to like have him get a flagrant two on something or a bad, a get thrown out of the game on two technicals. So yeah, I mean, I, I mean it's head. obvious Draymond, you know, has to be careful. I mean, the eyes are out now. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm sure. And then he was engaging with the, the, the crowd that makes it worse. So I think referees are, and Silver was I, I there believe, too. I believe I believe they're fair, but I do believe that the emotions of the crowd do, not does can affect referees. Yeah. Um, yeah. So just got to be careful. Just got to be careful going forward. Like I, I mean, if the Kings are going to beat them, um, which I still don't think they will, um, if they're going to beat them, let, let's. I want everybody to play. You know, yeah. Just. I don't. I don't like when guys go out. You know, injury thing. You know, unfortunately, I hate that. But I just like guys when you know playing and everybody's there, so it's no questions. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, and I, I think Draymond's getting his ankle checked out. Uh, he's getting an X-ray on his ankle from um, the from uh, Sabonis holding it. So maybe they're uh, maybe just <laughs> drawing more attention to the whole thing. <laughs> Good plan. A smart move. Smart. <laughs> um, and I think his, his presser last night. He also said that uh, he's uh, he's getting old and he's not as flexible anymore. So he he, he was only, he was he was going forward. It was the only way he could go. He said he couldn't really stretch his leg out. He could only stretch it a little bit forward. So 
That's what uh that's why he stepped on his stomach. And I think the Kings were also sure. saying that Draymond could have collapsed uh Sabonis' lung or something like that too. So there's yeah, that's that's what the Kings are saying about him stepping on his stomach. And they're both calling it dirty from the other side, which is great. Clay called it a really dirty play by Sabonis. And the Kings, I think Sabonis called it like somewhat similar to that too about him stepping on. Himself. I mean, is, they they were both unnecessary. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just that you know, I think it's one thing that saved sort of Sabonis is the grabbing of people's legs has been done. I mean, they have a clip of Kawhi doing it to um, Booker the last game. He like grabbed his leg and, and no call was made. Yeah. Um, when going for a loose ball uh, on a crucial play in the first half, yeah, he, he um he just grabs his leg, no no play, nothing's called. Um, but if a guy's, yeah, I mean, Draymond technically, yeah, he could have got hurt. I mean, he's, he's you know most times the guys are too good of an athlete for that to affect them. If a guy's just grabbing, it's one thing to grab, it's another thing to grab and pull. Mm-hmm. Um, that's different. But you know, in Draymond's eyes, or Draymond feeling it, he—that's what he might have done. We don't know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's why I, that's why I do not think that Draymond will get this because um, I, I deemed um, Sabonis' actions worse than obviously they call in the game. Yeah. 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 yeah so. Yeah. Hopefully both guys, or hopefully Draymond's not suspended, and we get a a, a complete series in that Golden State Sacramento um, series. Okay, so now moving on to uh, our Sixers. So um, let me go right into another first topic. Uh, so Sixers blew out the Nets in the first game. Um, second game, a lot more interesting. Down by five at halftime, he kind of looked lost at certain points in the first half of the game, but uh, that uh, lead was erased, outscoring the Nets by 17 in the second half to win by 12. So my question to you guys, what changed in the second half uh, to change the game and open it up for us, Eric? Well, I mean, I think we were getting stops. Um, I think I started scoring. I, I think he, more than anything, we buckled and started taking advantage of the way they were playing. Um, you know, they they were they have their scheme, um, but guys started – making the extra pass, making the right plays, and effort was better. Um, there was a game that I felt in the second half that we were, we could, that's the type of game I felt we could have won even when you don't shoot well, because a lot of other things were, were, were done well. Um, the rebounding, the passing of the ball, the, the effort, defense. I think collectively um, and individually, um, everybody stepped up. Um, that was a playoff win. Um, you know, even though people kind of see us as a team that the Nets that we should be, they see the, the Nets as a team that we should be. Mm-hmm. Um, so some people are surprised when we kind of have a close game. Um, that's a playoff win. Those are if we're trying to go far, you'll have some games like that where it's just not going your way, but you still try to figure it out and you still pull it out in the end. Ugly wins. Yeah. Um. I felt Embiid settled in a little more as a playmaker instead of trying to force the ball that he did in the first half. I feel like James stopped forcing it as well. I think he let Maxi and Harris eat on their single teams a little more. Uh, Harris finally looked to dominate a smaller opponent. That was really nice to see. Uh, so in games one and two, he shot the ball 14 times each, each game. Now, I want to guess from you guys, how many times did Tobias Harris shoot a ball 14-plus times in a game since February 1st? What are your guesses? 14 times? 14 since or February more. 1st? Since February 1st. How many times has Tobias Harris done that? Two or three. 29 one. games. It's 29 games total from February 1st on. So there you go. There's a sample size. Two or, two or three. I'm going to say one. Two or three, no more than five. Zero. Holy crap. Zero. Yeah. I mean, I know them very much. Yeah. I mean, like down the stretch, you're shooting like single digits. So two games in a row, 14. He's clearly, clearly turning on to be more aggressive. I, I love seeing that. Um, overall, weird game. Some stats and some stuff I jotted down from it. Um, Sixers doubled the Nets turnovers. Uh, yet we almost had double their points off turnovers than they did, which was really interesting. Um, 
So it shows you we did a great job getting back, coupled with the Nets' just inability to make jumpers. I think Jacques Vaughn talked about that too. Like they they had some of the looks they wanted, they just couldn't they just couldn't make anything. So uh, coaching wise, he felt like he made the right decisions. It just didn't show up in the stat sheet. Um, and in fact, Embiid only had one less turnover than the entire Nets team, which is pretty crazy too. He had eight; they had nine as a team. Um, we shot horribly. They, they missed a lot of shots in this wide open shots in the second half. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, if I if I, if I wanted to state one thing that I felt that was discouraging for us was that that I think they'll make a lot of those shots at home. Just if they get the crowd behind them, they get runs. Um, yeah. I, that was. They missed a lot of wide open shots. They did, yeah. We both shot horribly at least. So it's like it's not like oh we, we you know we 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 won despite shooting really well and they shot well. We both yeah, shot. I mean, but that but that but that particular, the second half, for the Nets in Game Two was the polar opposite of the first half in Game One for us. Yes. So they get those same looks. If they would have knocked them down at the rate that we knocked them down, we would have lost that game. Yeah. 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 And coming out of the gate in the first half, so we weren't making careful, it all. Given, you got to be careful giving guys and team like wide open looks. I mean, it was wide open look after wide open look. Yeah. No, I, yeah. Got capable shooters. I mean, like Cam yeah. Johnson, who was extremely hot in the first half, had tons of wide open shots. Royce O'Neal, like they have him wide open. Yeah, like, Royce O'Neal had a lot. Running out there wide open shots. Yes. Your, boy, your, boy, your boy Dinwiddie can't hit the ocean from the beach. That's why I said if he has a big – he played well, they're hard to beat. That's why I said he was the most crucial guy. Yeah. And my buddies in that spin, I told him you guys have had one guy go off in each game, but you don't have – you haven't had a second guy help at all. First game was Bridges, no one else. Second game was Johnson, no one else. They don't have – like they haven't had a second guy to at least score like 20-something, even like 18 to 20 or something. Um, when you don't have a true number one. Yeah. Um, so we shot under 50% and won, something we only did 50% of the time during the season. We lost the free throw battle, which is pretty crazy for us because, you know, we shoot a million. Um, we Hard, killed them on the board. Has, Hard has zero free throws through two, two games, zero attempts through two games so far. Wow. I didn't yeah. even know that. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. Um, seven to one block. Well, I, mean, because he wasn't, I mean, that game once, but he's been attacking the rim, especially early in games. He was, he, he, he was acting like he got fouled, but they wouldn't yeah. call him the fouls. They were calling anything. Not, yeah. He's not getting calls. And you know what? I was actually talking to Marcus about it yesterday. Not that I was a big Houston fan, but I watched a lot of basketball throughout the years. Seems like over his career, Harden doesn't get those regular season calls. It's like, I, I know he still plays his game, so it's easy to say he should be used to that by now, but – yeah, I, I he seems shocked. He seems shocked that he doesn't get them. I think it, I think it becomes a point of emphasis for teams to, hey, don't put him on. So I think the emphasis of on your hands when he, has, um, I think they say something to the referees. I, I, often, I believe all of that is in play because you can see guys intentionally. You know, I always like you always know guarding the guy, especially a guy that pump fakes or tries to draw contact. The one thing you always want to tell referees and show referees is your hands. You want to show that, hey, I'm not reaching. So if you kind of show your hands more, they're less inclined to call that foul. Um, so I believe that that's a point of emphasis with James as far as um, because more teams are playing him one on one. So you play him more one on one and try to play him with length. Um, that's the way to that's the way to do it. Um, obviously, they try to make him go right, but you know that's that's the way you do it. You'll see it even more, and it could be worse on the road. Yeah, well, zero zero free throw attempts. I mean, how much worse? Uh, no, I'm saying as far as the getting calls, it could be worse on the yeah, road. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it did, I can't believe that they beat us in the free throw attempts. That's crazy. Yeah, I mean, you could. Yeah, I mean, he can get fouled, but it's just about whether you get fouled when you when you're shooting or in the bonus. I mean, mm-hmm. That's that's the issue i thought at least one of those should have been called uh he they're, they're yeah, you're right some of them were files. i don't yeah i, I think i believe it's a point of emphasis for them but i do believe that the referee could have called some of those calls and it wouldn't have been questioned well and Bede alluded to that too he talked about how um they're doing a lot of crying about uh having no fouls be called yes. uh, 
pulling Nick Nurse. Yeah, that's why I said I felt that it was a point of emphasis for them telling the referees or saying something. Yeah, I believe that. Man, but to go from eight a game to zero in two games, man, that's a huge change. I just, yeah, I, my, I, I, I mean, is this? I mean, Joel from thirty-three to what? Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, I mean, I told you guys, I'm like, man, you can't let this just play. Like, well, I don't know why they – so that difference between when back then, like, God couldn't – he was just waiting to the play the double. No, we're going to go play. We're not, not going to let you just go off. But yeah. it's, that's not – that's going to be every game, every series. Yeah. You have some teams that were doubling in certain situations or certain spots, but – He's going to have to adjust because a very good, solid defensive team, not saying that the Nets aren't, I'm just saying, like, can change it up depending on where you are. If you're on the block, they may come on the pass. You're on the elbow, they may come on the dribble. You, 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 you're on the wing, they may come on the dribble. Mm-hmm. If, you go, if you dribble left, you know, they may come from the from the top. If you dribble right, they may come from the baseline. Like, yeah. they can change it up on you. Or they may they did a be better job a of that in this game. Or designated doubler. So yeah. he's done the job of finding people, but he also had he also had eight turnovers. They've eight, done eight their job. Doing it. it was a, yeah, and they've done their job because they've forced him to turn the ball over, and they've kept him below average. Yeah, they just messed up. They didn't capitalize off those because we they had double our we had double their turnovers and we have double their points off turnovers. That's not a good sign. The way we, the way game two looked, if we get a similar game like that on the road, we'll lose. Yeah, yeah. Or if we play a better team like Boston, we'll no, lose. I mean, I'm talking about this series. This series right here. If we play similar, the the way that we play in game two, it will be a loss on the road. This series. Yeah. Speaking of how the Nets kind of changed it up and stuff, and it's one of the things that was kind of surprising is the fact that we haven't really seen much from Claxton, at least in this pa- in, in this past game. Um, so my question to you guys is, are you kind of surprised the Nets have gone so small so early on in the series and for so long during this last game? I think Claxton only got 21 minutes. Well, no. I mean, I, I did. Um, with them selling out to double him, you can do that. Um, they aren't playing one on one at all. So, and Joel was allowing it to be a little easier because he won't go on the block. Mm-hmm. So, they know that. Like, he's not going to go on the block. So, we just get somebody to fight him 15, 17 feet out. Then we win catches. Now we get out and run and make him have to guard a perimeter player. That's how Cam Johnson and all these guys get off. Yeah. So, that's why I'm saying if they're making shots, it's going to be tough. We got. We can drop a game. Yeah. And, they, and they're not going to change it. If Claxton's not in the game, they're not going to bring another big in that kind of – unless the big shoots three. So, like, they're, they're going to change their style. They're going to have a style with Claxton. They're going to have a style without him. That's what they think they can – they have to do to, to win. So, like I said, they, they're selling out to double him no matter if who's in the game. So, why why do you have to stay big? And Joel's not listening. Like I'm saying, he's not punishing them where he's running to the room every play. No. And he's catching shooting before the double's there. Like, he's not doing any of that because that takes a lot of energy. He's not going to do that, which allows them to do that. Like, that's, you know, that's the difference. Like, with a guy like Shaq, Shaq was running to the rim. So you couldn't really double because you threw a high catch and shoot. It was too late already. He was already, he was already so deep. Yeah, it's nothing you can just you put a little guy. He scored every single time. Yeah. yeah. Joel could do the same thing. But that's a different kind of playing. You run from rim to rim. Yeah. <laughs> Not rim to free throw line. That matters. Yeah. A lot more energy exerted, less would be available for defense. So I well, yeah. I mean, in post, I mean, you you gotta work because they could, you know. Now they have two people on you. Um, but I did see him posting up one time and demanding the ball. We didn't throw it. Mm. 
Um, they kind of half fronted them, and somebody was like acting like they were coming from behind on the over the top pass, and we just didn't throw it, and he kind of went away from it. Um, I get why they went small. It it, it did work. I mean, if you're if you're Jacques Vaughn and the coaching staff looking at the stats, you see Embiid, you know, twenty eight points, and you see Embiid eight turnovers. You'd say the strategy worked. We just couldn't hit. Shots off those turnovers. Yes. So does that, does they're that mean looking at game work? two no. saying that we make shots. Yeah, they're looking at game two saying we make shots. We win that game. Yeah. I believe that too. Yeah. So I think we have more to game plan and adjust to because I think they're going into game three thinking that strategy worked. We'll hit shots at home. So we need to come. We need to do something <laughs> to figure out how to break that a little bit. And it's not the first time someone's gone small against us. Um, I told my buddy when I went to the Nets game when they had all their backups in, I was like, dude, you guys don't have a legit backup center. What is this? I was like, you're you're gonna maybe go into a series against Joel with no real backup center. What do you guys do? What what, what was Marks doing? Like, what was he sleeping at the wheel during half the season? You, you you had to go after a guy, man. Like you had to I, I just think that was incredibly irresponsible. They don't have anyone to throw at him. Even Claxman is in there is too small, he's just not big enough. And he's a liability I mean, on that, 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 That's the – you're right, but I also believe that that's where Ben Simmons was going to be used. Yeah. I mean, he, he was guarding him in, in, uh, when we played him that first that first time. That's what Ben Simmons was going to be used as. The way that they were going to play him was sort of a point center or a uh, guy. So, I believe yeah, – Against that most teams, though, against Joel. They were – were set up when he was playing for him to kind of be that guy. Yeah. Because they weren't. If you listen to some quotes that Jack Vaughn said a long time ago, he was talking about how he couldn't have Claxton and Ben on the court at the same time. Yeah. So he was being used in that manner. But so the thing you is, take him away and they didn't they didn't adjust because they didn't go go get a new guy. They just like we just gonna play small. Mm-hmm. But if Claxton they wanted five shooters, the guys, five guys who can also shoot at the same time to pull Joel out. Ben wouldn't really do that if he was on the court instead of Claxton. It'd be the same problem, wouldn't it? Well, Ben would have the ball. That's true. You'd have Dinwiddie off ball at that point. Yeah. So you have you have guys off the ball, and that's the thing. Like if Joel obviously wouldn't guard him, and then he just dribble handoff, and guys are coming off getting clean looks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Same thing. That's the difference because he's a a center. Um, or that can, you know, he's basically you're playing like Draymond. Draymond's just more of a willing shooter than Ben is and shoot a three and make a three. Um, but you, you play him in that same manner. You know, you just don't have somebody coming off. But that's how you would play him. So that's the plus side of the strategy. So the negative side is they were out blocked seven to one. We had a block advantage over them. And we out rebounded them by 23. Those are Pure no Claxton. Their tallest guy was like Din, um, um, Finney Smith at the time. That's not – that is a problem. So, yeah, they would they should have shot better, but we didn't shoot well either. And yeah, we I, are- mean, I, I mean, I, I believe that the rebound numbers will go down because some of those rebounds, you look at a guy like Paul Reed, had a lot of offensive rebounds. Yeah. Um, yep. believe in you historically that changes on the road um you, you, you all of a sudden the guy gets on a now he gets some over the backs uh, just just by being there he they jump and like you're just gonna see more stuff um we take more you know shots and we you know, historically and take more shots yeah or longer rebound so there's the quicker team use more long rebounds. Um, so be interesting. Yeah. Uh, and looking at the, the rebound totals, this was uh, obviously the small ball plays a factor too, but this was NBA's second highest uh, playoff rebounding performance in his career with 19. You're the tallest guy on the court by like five inches. Yeah. 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 A lot of times Tobias was the second tallest guy on the court for mm-hmm. long stretches. Crazy. Yeah, Paul Reed was by far the biggest guy on the court a lot of times. I know, and and, he, and he's undersized, big. Yeah. yeah. 
So that that's yeah. so that when when Doc was talking about having certain games where we might go to a bigger backup five. This series, I don't think it's going to be it, man. I think this is Paul Reed's series. Yeah, I mean that's I mean, that's where you could see them making a an adjustment when Reed is in the game. Like they may go small, but not small. You know what I'm saying? Like those guys may not be necessarily small guys, but it's just a smaller lineup with no big. But Cam Johnson and Ben Smith, so they aren't that much smaller than Paul Reed. Yeah. They really aren't. Yeah. No. From a height no. standpoint. So I, I think it's a point. Want, maybe one inch. To, hey, we got to block this guy out. Like, yeah. Uh, it's, some of it is a point of emphasis. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see how the, uh, how that changes in uh, Brooklyn uh, for them. Um, but uh, before we get to our predictions for uh, game three, um, I just want to get your thoughts on this. this is something that came from um, the, the Milwaukee Bucks game where Giannis got hurt. Bill Simmons and I think a few other people online were talking about how the NBA needs to kind of think about banning the charge. And so I kind of wanted to hear you guys' reaction to that. Um, is that because is that a stupid idea or is it worth a thought to think about banning the uh, the charge? I don't know how you're going to do that. I, 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 what do you mean banning the charge? Because because it's the, the, you mean the charge underneath the rim or when a guy jumps? Yeah, like a guy like coming over Plus late. Were you going to ban it at half court um, when the guy takes a charge? So you, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Like you're talking about when the guy. Okay, so are I'm you like, going to block? Talking about, talking, about, talking about late rotations and guys getting under guys when they're already up in the air. Yeah. Well, I mean, most times guys in in those particular situations, I didn't think they were. Well, after the guy got in the air, you can't. If a guy jumps and you go up under him, that's that's already a foul. Like you can't do that. That's an automatic foul already. Yeah. So yeah. I'm trying to figure out what what it is that you're going to ban. Um, because you know, if you ban something like that defensively, then you know, offensive players off the ball, kind of setting a screen, is almost the same way. A lot of people get hurt that way. So, Good point. I don't. I just don't know how you can do that. I just my initial thought was, do it correctly, and it's not a problem. <laughs> like yeah. instead of teaching guys and making them do it correctly, like we're gonna ban it. It's like right. It's it's like a form of like uh, cancel culture here. You're you're gonna cancel charges because guys can't do it right. Do it right, and it won't be a problem. That's, that's always been in there, man. They they put in the you know restriction circle for charges because people were already jumping and you know they were you know it's already rules for when you can how you can take a charge underneath the basket like i don't know maybe they you know if, if there's something they can do um if without quote unquote banning it, i think if there's something they can do is they can extend the restriction area that's probably the only thing you can do if you extend it further out and guys know they can't take a charge um, to a certain point. I believe that's the only thing you could do. If you extend that restriction out, then you're, you you have to get a guy before he elevates. I guess you could try giving plays like like that one on Giannis, maybe a harsher foul, saying it's like a reckless play. Maybe I mean, you can, but that's not going to stop a guy from doing it because he does. he's not doing it with a reckless intent. Like, he's actually – Guarantee you the game plan is to take charges on Giannis. Yeah. Take charges on John Moran. I guarantee you that was the game plan. Was to yeah. take, was the you know to take charges on those guys. So like I'm saying, if if, the, if you want to change anything, to me the only thing you can do is extend the restricted area, because those guys are very well equipped of not taking charges inside that restriction. Yep. They understand that they can't do that. That's an automatic foul. So most you don't see most guys, they're not doing it. That's why you will see a guy where he has his heel or something on the line. You don't see a guy in the circle to do it. No. So you extend often. that, then they, they they will adjust and that'll limit guys doing it because it'll be so far out that most guys don't take off to shoot or dunk from that far out. 
Yeah. Um, plus, if you take it out, <laughs> Giannis is going to go to the free throw line 40 times a game. Like, I mean, it, he, he would just bulldoze his way to the line. There'd be no stopping guys from doing that. Embiid, Giannis, um, you couldn't, yeah. I mean, they're, you'd be, they'd be finished. It'd, it'd be a free throw game. You have to have that in well, there. It's, it's not a restriction from being defended. It's a restriction from charge. Yeah. That's what the restriction You can still have contact with them, especially if the primary defender. It's the secondary defender where where that comes into play. If they catch the if they catch the ball outside the paint, but if you catch the ball inside the paint, that is no longer a restriction. If you're the primary defender, you're no longer um, restricted. It's just that secondary defender. But I'm talking about if you're Giannis, you have the ball. Somewhere in your brain there is, okay, I have to watch out for a guy switching over and getting, you know, getting, getting his um, position and, and drawing a charge. If that's out of his head completely, I mean, he's going like that every time. Not that he doesn't do yeah, that anymore. I mean, I don't, I mean, I don't think, yeah, it's just out of – I'm just saying, like, it's, it's, if you want to prevent it, what we're talking about from happening, that's the only way to, in my opinion, yeah. you can do it. Yeah, um, I think it'll always be throwbacks or consequences from making any kind of adjustment in the league. Mm-hmm. Um, if you don't make a change, then we we're gonna be talking about the same thing. Yep. So, which one you want? Guys shoot free throws or guys get injured? Yeah, we also can't like throw the rules we need up. Need those guys playing in the league. The league we we want our league to be successful. We need the better players to play. Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah. And we need all the guys to play. I don't want anybody to get injured. Yeah. So if there is a way to prevent injuries from happening, I'm all for it. Yep. They asked Drew about it. I mean, Drew, who was team heavy on us, um, was like, that's part, it's part of the game. That's what I'm saying. I don't know how you can change it. That's yeah, he's like, when you I'm jump like, in the air. Ban it, rather. Ban it, rather. All I'm, that's what I'm saying. If you're going to make any changes, in my opinion, for this particular play that they're trying to avoid, extending the restriction lane is the only way, in my opinion, you can do it. Because the, the restriction lane were put, was put in there because guys would jump and guys would move up under them and get charges. That's why it was put there. Mm-hmm. So you could no longer do that. So they inside the circle, you can no longer do that. And guys... Have you noticed that it stopped? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stop doing it. So but now you have guys that can jump from the free throw more. line and dunk. I'm just saying, but it, it, it's not many that can do that. And it's not yes. many that will do that. So that's why it's John and Giannis numbers, getting injured. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. That's why you will limit the number of times that this happens. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's but as you say, you change the game. You do change the game. More free throws, more fun. You know, so, but it, trust me, these guys in the league are so good, they'll adjust. Yeah. But I yeah. feel that's the only way you can address it if you're going to address it. Yeah. Obviously, we want, we want to see these guys, especially, you know, the regular season playoffs, you want to see these guys play. So, if I mean, if, if this were to happen, I'd prefer, you know, more free throws rather than more injuries, of course. Um, uh, but, okay, so uh, – Last topic here. So Thursday night, uh, we will be traveling to Brooklyn. It's obviously not that big of a commute for our guys. Uh, right now, a four, we are a four and a half point favorite going uh, to Brooklyn on um, on Thursday night at 7.30 uh, p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, we've had a, a different high score each of the last two games. So for game one, uh, MB with 26. And then last night, Maxi with 33. Um, so my question, obviously, who do you guys have on uh, Thursday night? And who do you think will have a big game for us offensively? on a Thursday night? Uh, um, I picked us to win in five. I think this is the game we do not win. Um, I think Joel will have a big game. But, yeah, I think, think we win four and five. Four and five, not three. Um... They'll play their best game of the series um, the next game. I think Embiid will be high scorer. I think he'll adjust a little better. I think 
James will be the second highest scorer. I think he'll come back with vengeance a little bit. Maybe they'll get into the, the ref's ears about, I have zero free throw attempts a series, dude. Like, seriously? Zero attempts? Um, I think I think we win. I think we win like a four-point game. I think they cover, though. I think it'd be pretty close. Do you have it going? I know I know Eric said before it was going to be five games. Do you have it five games, stage or do you have it four? I forget. You had a five, I thought, too. Yeah, I think I had five. I'll see. Okay, so you think we lose game four then, I'm going to guess, based on – Basically, your, your your prior. I mean, the way no, that was pre the way it's going now. I think I think we're going to sweep them. I just don't think that we played awful. We played b- really bad one half of the first game. They played really good one half of the first game. They just I, I just don't think they have enough, man. They run out of gas every game. They ran out of gas last game. They just didn't. They're gas into that game. I mean, we, we we. I'm just saying. All I say is, we had two games at home that we won. We were supposed to do that. I agree. Yeah. Uh, just as far as game flow, they're spending a lot of energy running up on all those double teams, man. That's a lot of energy from those guys all game to be doing that. Um, we're absorbing the blows and we're adjusting it's, to it. It's, 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 it's full rotation, so it's not as difficult as one guy doing all the running, doubling, and then running all the way back to his man. It's they're, with their size, similarity in size, they, they are um, – Full rotating. Um, I think they just need to be more, more in selective in how they rotate and how they double. If they make that adjustment, um, because like you said, it's it's you can preserve some energy being a little more selective as far as how you double, when you double, where you double from. Um, I believe that they're going to do that. I believe they'll play their best game on game three. I don't think I think we'll be close, but I think they'll pull down the end and then we'll smack them in four and five. Yeah, Eric, are you noticing anything? Because um, obviously, the two games were, were different, but this is one certain thing with the fact that Bridges had twenty plus points in the in the first half, didn't do anything in the second half. Cam Johnson twenty plus points first half, didn't really do much in the second half. What are we doing defensively to kind of stop those two from like? I mean, in the second half adjustments, what what, what have you noticed from those two, the last two I mean, games? As far as Cam Johnson, I don't think there was anything different. From he's me. missed. I thought he just missed wide open shots. Yeah, I, I, don't, I thought we didn't adjust to him. Um, as far as Bridges, you put a little more attention to him. I think um, he was chasing matchups. So I think doing a better job of avoiding him chasing matchups. I thought, it, especially in game one, he was trying to go at James or trying to go at where he felt like he had the matchup. And I think the second game, we kind of avoided him going into those particular matchups, um, whether we pre-switched if his if James Mann went out there um, to get more similar size players or your better defenders out there. I just thought that that adjustment was made to kind of um, limit his opportunities to go one on one where he felt he had a matchup, and I thought, and 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 I thought Joel was more attentive to his drives and his playmaking when he attacked the rim on the back on the back end um, defensively. Yeah, look, and but like I said, that that that'll be that'll be an interesting thing going forward because. They do drive and get attention to kind of jump pass and can't, you know, kick it out, swing, swing. If they're making those shots, I don't know how you can play like that. Where Joel is just basically leaving the guy. Yeah. That, I mean, he, that's why Roy Cam got so many wide open shots. He's just leaving the guy because they're lot. getting broken down one on one. And that's what they're trying to do is break you down one on one, score if you help them with swing, swing to the shooters. And if they're making them, you know, it's. So, go the other way. So, in the Sixers' Twitter world, everyone was kind of praising Doc for the second half adjustments, going to the zone, playing more zone defense in the second half. Do you just think? Do you think the defense was effective, or do you think they they just weren't making shots more so in the second half? Was it more zone and more just them missing shots? I think that the zone slowed them down as far as um, the one on one, and that's what they play off of is creating opportunities one on one. I think the zone made them more of a pass team than a dribble drive, get the ball in the paint, kick out team, driving kick. And with those driving kicks, 
you're in the paint, you're throwing it out. That's almost like a practice shot. And most guys are more comfortable with those shots coming from there versus just swinging it over the top and, and, and playing against the clock a lot. So I think it affected them. Um, they'll adjust to be ready for that as well. I can't wait. It's going to be an exciting uh, game three in the series. Hope, hopefully Tage is right, but I, I do. I, I, ha- I bet on this side. I've had it going f- uh, five games as well. So Brooklyn's got to get a win at some point here <laughs> in order for me to win that bet. So. <laughs> but I'm, I'm, getting ner- I'm getting nervous about the Golden State series right now. I, I took Golden State to win that series, and right now you could actually probably get it. If if you still think Golden State's going to win, Eric, great odds. Get it. Great odds right now. Get them? Okay, I might take that. Yeah. I don't let the market say it though, or you said Tasia because you know Marcus, he gives me the automatics. I'm losing every time. <laughs> I think yeah, I was actually thinking about that earlier. I was gonna do another, I already did a series barley. I might do another one, uh, just because you're getting great odds now. I think it's like I looked earlier. I'll look right now, actually. I'm I'm on it right now. Uh, but if I have the Golden State, if I think Golden State's gonna win in six, they went four straight. Those odds are pretty high, right? I bet twenty dollars to get you something good. It's yeah, actually not. I mean, it's it's plus money. It's not great. It's plus one thirty for them to win the series. Oh, that's that's not a, that's not good for them to win the series in six. To win in six at this point, Marcus, what is that? To win in six, um, series uh, exact. Look for exact uh, series score. I'm not. I don't have. Um, it's not giving me a Warriors uh, per se. It just says like. Uh, if you had series exact games, uh, just six games would be plus 200 right now. Like, if you just think the series is going to go six games, it would just be plus. It, you can't pick Warriors six games. It's not. Oh, like, really? You can't say Warriors win in six? Nah, it's not letting me do that. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Actually, no, I, I found it. Okay. If you want, series throws. Yeah, if you want Golden State in four, four games to two, that'd be plus 360. So bank, bank 25, you win 115 on that. Okay. So. You think they're going to win four straight, Eric? Um, yeah. If I had to, if I had to judge them winning, I would say four straight. Damn. That'd be crazy if that, if that happens. <laughs> I mean, would you be surprised, these, though? They get, these, they, get, they get three and four at home. I mean, it's a – true i think it all comes down to them winning they just just if they win two games at home i mean it's one two didn't matter doesn't matter anymore yeah okay if if sacramento let's say golden state wins game three sacramento wins game four do you think you think series is done at that point no i'm not counting out golden state to their out okay i believe that they can win any series if they got a chance to win if they if they're still Able to win, I believe they can win until they're not winning. Yeah, yeah. yeah. First time, uh, Steph in, in the in the Steph era, they are down two zero in a series, which is pretty interesting. Yeah. yeah, it could be the first time they come back from down two two. There you go. Yeah, there's a first time for everything. <laughs> Based on how you look at it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but all right, fellas. Well, we'll see you guys Friday as we are hopefully talking about a potential sweep on Saturday. So. We'll, uh, we'll see you guys Friday. Watch your fingers. All right. Take it easy. Have, have a good one, guys. Awesome.